What's up guys, we're on here. This week on 3D Nerd Stop, we're gonna print out a gumball globe for our candy dispenser. All right guys, now this is what we're gonna print. This uh, I've already made this model, but I'm gonna show you how I did it. It wasn't too difficult. So this is gonna be our globe. All right, so. Of course, I'm doing this in Tinkercad. So this is what I did. First thing I did was come over here, start with a blank one. And first thing I did was import the original jar. So we'll get it to import. And there you go. And you can see when you look at this, you can see in this right here where it has those weird spots. I mean, you can clearly see it in this model. But we're not going to worry about that too much right now. That's not what we're focusing on. So the first thing we're going to do is we get ourselves a box or a cube, whichever you want to call it. All right. And we are going to stretch this up and grab a corner and stretch it out and make it big. And what we're basically looking to do is make it bigger than our current jar. And we're just going to come up and cut that off right about there. That looks pretty good. What we're going to do is we're going to turn this into a hole. And as you can see, oops, we got to bring some more material out here. There we go. That'll get rid of the jar underneath the neck because we need this neck in order to put it in our model. And since this neck fits really well, we don't want to modify it. So we're going to do that. And then we're going to group that together. There we go, we've got it all grouped together, and as you can see, that just leaves us with the collar. So that's good. We can take that and just kind of move that off to the side. Ooh, where's it going? All right, something's funky here all of a sudden. There we go. Bad angle. Okay. So now that we have that done, now what we need to do is we need to make the ball. So we'll get a sphere. But we'll get a sphere. And we'll dig out our little ruler here so we can do measurements on it real quick. Drag it over here onto the center. And we are going to make this 176 millimeters by 176 millimeters by, oops, where'd it go? Uh, 176 millimeters. So that gives us a perfectly round ball. It's 176 millimeters all the way around. Okay. So we've got that. And then we're going to create another one right off to the side here. And we're going to make it just a little bit smaller. We're actually going to make it two millimeters smaller. So we're going to make it 174 by 174 by 174. Okay. Because that'll make... When we turn this into a hole, which is what we're going to do, and we put this inside this one, that'll leave us one millimeter of thickness material all the way around on the inside. So we take these two, we set them next to each other. We select them both. We click Align, Alignment. We want to align it center. We want to align it center. And then if you rotate around it, you can align it center. So we just aligned it center on all three axes. So now it's in the center. So now we can highlight that and we can group it together. So now that makes that a hollow ball. And you'll see that here in just a second how it is. So what we'll do next is take the hollow ball and set it in the center. And we are actually going to change our Z axis. Hang on a second. Did I close my ruler? Yeah, I did. We need our ruler back. There we go. We have our ruler here. So now what we want to do is our Z axis and we want to go to a negative 10. So we're dropping the ball down negative 10 below the surface here. And then all we're going to do is grab ourselves another cylinder or box. I'm going to grab a cylinder, I guess. Oops, drag it into play here. And we will just make it like 150 by 150 
and 20 is fine and we're also going to set it to a negative 10 and then we are going to take it and slide it underneath the ball okay this is how we're going to get our flat top so we put that underneath the ball like so and we're going to turn it into a hole all right so when we do that and then we group the two together now as you can see if I scroll up here you can see that it's hollow all right so now what we need to do is we need to put a uh, bottom surface on here so what we'll do is we'll grab another cylinder real quick we're going to make it one millimeter tall because that's how thick the walls are on the inside and it is it needs to be 80 millimeters by 80 millimeters and then if I select this and select this and do a line again and I align it on the two axes when you look underneath it now it's put itself where it needs to be to create the bottom of the ball and now we can just select both of them let's see do we get them both yep and we can group and when we do that now the bot now the ball has a bottom pretty simple now what we need to do is we need to put the top on the ball so the first thing we'll do is we'll do an align on it and we'll align it both directions Ooh, take that back let's move it up first a little bit here let's take this and move it up above the height of the ball okay now we'll select them both do an align on it and align it in both directions now all we need to do is lower this down until it rests on top of the ball nicely oops and it would help if I could see it better so we'll do that and we'll raise it up just a little bit there we go that looks pretty good let's check that looks like it's got it all the way around doesn't it looks pretty good doesn't it guys I think it does so we'll group that together real quick if I keep grouping everything together it makes it so I can move it as one piece that's why I do it a lot some people don't group as much everybody has their own way of doing this that's just the way I like to do it so oops not what I meant to do I meant to drag the whole thing over here now we'll grab a cylinder again one last time okay and throw a ruler back down and I already know the measurement of this is 65 millimeters by 65 millimeters by 65 millimeters and then if I take this and lift it up so it's maybe a little too high I'll bring it down just a little bit so you kinda see how it's now sticks out of the top and goes down into the ball okay by doing that now if I select our ball and the plug and I align them on both axes X and Y now it's perfectly inside and I can select it and turn it into a hole okay and then I can select the ball and it make sure you have them both selected and group and it takes it just a second here and there we go that gives us our globe so now we have a gumball top designed so now we can take this and we can go to our design and say download for 3d printing alright guys after we get the STL file downloaded then we'll switch over to Cura I've already got the model loaded up for us here real quick in Cura uh, as you can see it looks pretty good uh, let's go over our settings for this week uh, it's going to be our layer height is going to be 0.2 our shell our shell thickness is going to be 0.8 our top and bottom thickness will be 0.8 
Our fill density is going to be 100%. Our print speed is going to be 60. Now I have found with the clear PLA that it prints better at 200 than 210, so we're going to print it at 200. Uh, my bed temperature is going to be 50. We do not need any support material on this. All right, so that being said, this model is going to take 8 hours and 50 minutes approximately to print, which is 49.4 meters of material or 146 grams of material. All right, guys, so we'll get this saved off to the SD card and get the printer heated up and get her printing. All right, guys, before we get the printer going here and I show you the time lapse on printing the globe, I did go back and modify the original jar. Um, this is a viewer request. Uh, I, I was asked if I could modify the, the original jar to lose the bad spots in it. Um, I'm not going to reprint the jar, but as you can see here, I have modified it. I got rid of them. I would show everyone how I did it, but I had to do it in an application kind of like Mesh Mixer. And I don't know Mesh Mixer real well. Uh, I had to do it in a different application that I found, but I could only get a 15-day trial on it. Otherwise, it's like $200 for the software, and I don't fix enough models to need to spend $200 on a piece of software. I need to learn Mesh Mixer is what I need to do. So what I did is I went through, and basically, there's not a hole in this part right here where it shows up on the other models. What it is is it's too thin. It's less than 0.4 millimeters in thickness. So I basically just took a tool like Mesh Mixer, and I thickened the walls here now of course when I did it in the tool that I had it kind of messed up the inside a little bit as you can see here but this should still print just fine the candy should fall out of it just fine uh, it's just a little goofy looking on the inside I cleaned it up the best I could I am NOT a graphic artist so I just kind of used some tools and fixed it up this should print just fine um, I'm going to put this file as well as the file for the globe on Thingiverse and there will be a link in the description down below. Alright, so let's get the other one uh, on the printer. Let's get the printer heated up or get her printing.
All right, guys. Well, here's the old model with the old jar on it. And here is our new globe to put on it. So let's take this off real quick. We'll just get her to come out of here. There we go. Take that off real quick. And we'll just take the collar off of it. Now I'm going to put the collar on the globe here in just a minute. But first let's see what the globe looks like on top of the machine. There you go. I think that looks pretty good. I like it. So I got a whole bunch of candy here. Got me some Mike and Ikes. Um, I tried to find a bag of them. I couldn't find a bag at the grocery store, so I went ahead and just bought a couple boxes to put in here. So we'll set this over here just a little bit. Put this up here. Let's fill this up. Well, we won't fill it up, but we'll put some Mike and Ikes in it. There you go, guys. That's six boxes of Mike and Ikes. Um, it's a third full. As you can see, it's filled about here. So it would take, oh gosh, uh, probably about 12 more boxes or so to fill it up. Because that's six boxes. That's not too bad. So I'll go ahead and put our locking ring on it. Okay. And in order to fill the machine, you actually want to put the machine on the globe instead of the globe on the machine. I hope that makes sense. This way you don't have to worry about the candy spilling out while you're trying to hook all this up and get everything to line up. So there we go. We have the globe on the machine. Take the two together and voila. Now we have candy and our candy dispensing machine. So what do you say? Want to get some out? We got a quarter. Put our quarter in. Give her a spin. Woo! And like I said, it spits out a lot of candy. That's a good amount of candy for a quarter. <laughs> but it works, and it works great. Um, I'd probably say if I was to if I was to make another one of these, I might find a way to make the drum uh, opening inside a little bit smaller. That way it doesn't quite give out so much candy because that's almost an entire box worth of candy. But it does work and it works great. Alright guys. Thank you all for watching. If you like what you saw, please like and subscribe. Please leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you. Until next time, have a great day.